I want to begin by talking about the 2D diagonal cross sections of a 3D cube. And moreover, I want to do so in a way that hypothetical 2D beings, flatlanders, can understand. You know, to reason about these cross sections in a way that is essentially two-dimensional. Now, I will use some 3D visualizations, but this is really just sort of to help us as 3D beings to understand what's going on and to see that the 3D picture matches up with what we're getting out of our 2D reasoning. Okay, so here we have a 3D cube. It's being intersected with a 2D plane. You can see I've highlighted in orange the intersection. And uh, which plane is this? Well, it's the plane which is orthogonal to this normal vector, which I've drawn here. And in fact, we don't want to talk about just this plane, but the entire family of planes, which you can see here, which are orthogonal to this vector. And which vector is this? Well, it's the vector that joins two opposite corners of a cube. So for any corner of a cube, and that's actually true, this is true in any dimensions, there's a unique corner which is opposite to it in the sense that it's further away from it than any other corner. So in this case, I'm going with the corners where x, y, and z are all equal to plus one, and the corner where x, y, and z are all equal to negative one, because my, for my cube, x, y, and z all run between negative one and one. One way of understanding the intersection of a cube and a plane is by understanding the intersection of the plane with each of the six faces of the cube. Now this reduces mathematically to six 2D subproblems, each of which is the intersection of a line and a square. Now you can see that that actually is what I have over on the right, except that I only have two such subproblems. But you'll notice I've written three times next to each of them, and that's because three faces, due to symmetry, all work out to the same 2D subproblem, and then another three faces, also due to symmetry, work out to the same subproblem. Specifically, these three faces here reduce to the subproblem on the top, and these three faces here reduce to the subproblem on the bottom. Now, each of these six subproblems yields a line segment, which is the intersection of the square in question with the line in question. And the key observation is that whatever the intersection of the cube, the overall 3D cube and the plane is, it has to be somehow built from these six line segments. So how might we combine these six line segments to form the intersection of the cube and the plane? Well, one possibility is we could do this. And uh, this is a start. It does, in fact, use all six line segments, but it's pretty clearly wrong. So we're going to need a little bit more information if uh, we want to do this properly. So the first piece of extra information that we're going to use is that whatever the diagonal cross-section of the cube is, it needs to have triangular symmetry. Now, why is that? Well, the easiest way to see it is to notice that if we rotate the cube about this axis as shown here, every time we rotate by a multiple of 120 degrees, we get back to where we started, and that means that the cross-section has to be invariant under these rotations. Now, that, of course, multiples of 120 degrees is exactly the same as the rotation group preserving the triangle. Okay, cool. So now we've tried again, and we've got an example where we've combined these six line segments in such a way that they have triangular symmetry. And uh, this is maybe an improvement. It's, it's rather creative but it's also still quite obviously wrong. So we're gonna need a little bit more information before we're gonna be able to reason out the correct uh, cross-section. The missing bit of information is that whatever the cross-section might be, it needs to be convex. 
So here's an example here where I've taken these six line segments and I've created a convex shape with them. Now, what do I mean when I say that it's convex? Well, all I mean is that if you take any two points within the section, such as these two, and you draw the line segment between them, that line segment has to remain within the section. It, it can't go outside. Now, why does this cross section need to be convex? Well, it's because the cube is convex and the plane is convex and the intersection of two convex sets is convex. However, this candidate solution that we've just come up with, although it's convex, it's not both convex and triangularly symmetric. And it turns out that if you want to have both of these conditions, then the only reasonable candidate solution is this. And if you compare this with the 3D result on the left, you'll see that it looks about right. But uh, just to confirm, let's go ahead and let's change the camera angle and let's also get rid of the plane because it's kind of in the way. And now you can see very clearly that this is, in fact, the correct section, although we have it rotated, looks like uh, 180 degrees. And now, finally, let's walk our way through the family of planes and derive this solution for each cross-section and verify that it does agree with the 3D answer.